course of evolution, uh, as I said, totally when the need comes, they come right up and to help mankind. But where God is in a different dimension, it's completely a plan. To us, maybe it looks like random things. It's out of the need it comes. So, uh, the writing of the Prophet of God uh, is the only miracle that it's there. The fate of God is the miracle. Now you're saying, what kind of miracle is that? Well, Baha'i faith has come in 1844. Sometimes in 1844 and with 1957, about 113 years, I believe, when Shoghi Effendi ascended the last, more than 500 books is produced, revealed. Such a conglomerous, such a colossal theory that encompasses every need of humanity. Show me anything like that has been revealed by anybody anywhere. Social problems are simple when it has been told. First time is the Baha'i faith that introduces in a practical way the equality of man and woman. First time Baha'i faith brings up the universal government, which is still people don't know what it is. Billions and trillions of dollars are spent <clears throat> all over the world for the matter of uh, military. Baha'u'llah is a simple solution. Does these estates and provinces uh, in a country have uh, army against each other? No, there's one federal army that you know, control whole estates and whole provinces. Well, why can't the world has one army to control all the boundaries and the borders of the world? A cheap, a small army, because nobody else would have or should have army. Therefore, all these other monies that we have, we can spend to repair the earth in Africa, get rid of the disease, develop the sciences. Who before Baha'u'llah and the Baha'i has brought this up? Show it to me. Produce it in a practical way. You know, like it's not just uh, wishy-washy things. He says this, he plans for it, he constructs it, and he says practically through the world order of Baha'u'llah with the universal laws of justice to be the head of this movement, elected by the people, you can achieve this as practical as possible. So, uh, and this faith of God, it's, it's not a book. Believe me, it's an, a strategy. There are many things prophets of God say that literally it might be a mistake, but it is because they have a strategy in their head. I'll just give you a couple of them. Why would Muhammad in the Islam says uh, man and women are not equal? He clearly says that. Women are half. Why? Because he knows he himself wants to come back, which is God, in a form of a new religion your prophet, which would be the return of Jesus Christ, coming of the Bab, and he knows people would cling into the Islam to fight him back. That's why he brings this self-destruct mechanism that people cannot follow Islam, because man and women are not equal, and that's it. Then the, then the whole religion dies. It becomes like a food which is outside of the fridge. If you touch it, you die. Have you noticed that all these religious people, whether they're Christians, whether they're Hindus, whether they're Muslims, the more they are into the religion, the crazier they are. Their decisions are so stupid, even for their own good. It just seems it's like a star dead, and it's like a black hole. The more you get into it, the crazier you go, the more ignorant you become. Why? Because God has made it so you can't follow this religion. For example, Bob. It's the most miraculous of all the revelations. It's revealed for the elite, not just for the ordinary people. His writings are so amazing. I, I say that the writing of the Bob is like the water on the waterfall on the top of the mountain. It's very dangerous to get to it. It's beautiful. You can see it. But if you get there, you don't know, you'll fall and you die. It's very hard to approach. And the same water, when it comes into the prairie, when it comes right on the ground, it becomes the writing of Baha'u'llah, like a river. It takes you to his ocean, where you can immerse in the water, but it still is not drinkable. You can swim in it, enjoy it. It's not all that drinkable. So this water becomes useful, then it goes, refines itself through the pipes, comes right inside the household. Now it's the tap on the kitchen. We can drink it. That would be the writing of Abdu'l-Baha, the writing of Shawi Effendi. 
the Baha'i philosophers who claim they know philosophy, they would have to reconstruct the Baha'i faith to present it, to make it easier to understand, not more difficult. The guy who writes a book so difficult in philosophy because the subject is unknown to himself. He is totally oblivious of what he's talking about. Therefore, it just goes on and on and on to bring a huge volume of book. The whole thing, when I read it, is just one line. So, and this Bob, master of such a secretive writing, and it's all numerology that he talks about. Uh, what these things are. For example, in the verse of Quran says Vajhullah in Arabic, it's V, J, and H, the face of God. And there he says V, J, and H numerically, by the Arabic and Persian, it's equal to 14. And who is 14? Muhammad, Fatima, and 12 Imam after him. So the 14 immaculate essence of Islam is equal to Vaj, which is the face of God. So how he relates these things together and this immensity of the knowledge he has about these things is just most amazing to me. I have not actually seen any books of God that uh, in detail, as I said, is revealed for elite. But all those writings very clear. It's like a TV, but if you want to go to a writing of the Bob, you have to go behind the TV, get into the wires and everything. You have to be a specialist. So with this immensity of the knowledge this young prophet of God has, he says that David was a prophet before Moses. Everyone knows David came after Moses. Why would he refer to David before Moses? There might be other explanation in the future people find out. But I'm looking at it right now. And I see that the, his last book, uh, the Book of Name, literally 10,000 times maybe has mentioned in uh, reference to Baha'u'llah who's coming and all of it is for protection of him who comes right immediately after him. So he says this only to make it impossible to follow his books. He revealed maybe 40 times on the volume of Quran. Three, four of his books are incomplete. He says it has to be 19 chapter, but it's not. It's 11, it's 10, it's 5. Why would he do that? So that you cannot follow these books. Because he says that I am not the one that you have to look. I'm just a forerunner. I'm John the Baptist. The kingdom of God, Baha'u'llah, is coming after me. You just cling to that. And he keeps saying a thousands of times in this book of names, at least thousand to ten thousand times, this is a reference to that. So, a lot of these things that uh, comes in the writings uh, is essentially to uh, create some kind of a test. So you're saying that, wow, what is test? Mm -hmm. Test is necessary because it creates confidence in those who have done good and also those who are misguided so they know they're wrong. Muhammad comes for so many years, 20 some odd years, he teaches Quran. Okay, he says, I taught you everything, now I'm going to put a test. Why? Because I see half of you are complaining that we're calling ourselves Muslim and this guy calls himself Muslim and there's no differentiation between us. He eats people's money, he is a cheater, he's a crook, but he says I'm a Muslim and we, on the other hand, we're sacrificing our life and everything and there's no distinction between us and them. Muhammad says, okay, I want to put a test and we'll find out who fails. He, he does not put the name of his successor in Quran. But in public, he says, after me, it is him. Everyone, they're as if waiting for him to say, he says, ah, we don't follow these writings of Muhammad because it is not in written in Quran. Why? Why? Is there any problem between Muhammad and Quran? If what Muhammad says he shouldn't follow, or what Quran says he should follow, Muhammad says, outside of Quran, Ali is my successor. That's so simple to accept, but they don't. They're looking some way to show their crookedness. And those who are good people, this way they said, ha, ah, this is what we wanted. Now it's clear, these people were crook. Same thing happens in the Baha'i faith. A thousand stuff. Bob of a successor, doesn't have really a successor, but he sees one guy, he's a troublemaker, because he wants to keep himself too high and everything else. He gives him a title. He tells him, okay, after me you conduct the affairs of my followers 
and so on and whatnot. So the same man comes and attack Baha'u'llah. But Bob knew about this. This is why he told him, you are the chief of the Bobbies. Which means you are not more than this, because I said so, and I'm higher authority than you. I'm electing you. I'm appointing you. You are my appointee. And I tell you, you are to follow my writings, to him particularly. And he tells him not to change and alter the words and this and that. So it's very clear when he tells him, don't alter the word, that means you might do it. He knew this is a, a real snake. So he put a leash around him by giving him a title, only to stop him not to go further. Because in reality, after Bob was martyr, when Baha'u'llah was the beloved of the Bob, the master of the universe, the greatest manifestation of the planet, this same stupid, imbecile, snake, rat, he goes and ha attacks Baha'u'llah. And Sister Baha'u'llah, you're not anybody. So how would people distinguish? Right away, they look at uh, him and they say that, hey, listen, Bob told you you are this and that and that. Therefore, sit in your place and then go higher. The same thing happens. Even the last one after Shobhi Effendi. He has uh, one guy, Mr. Mason Remy. Shobhi Effendi chose him as a hands of the cause, a superior, a higher, an authority, let, let me say, among the wise. Did God know about him? Of course he knows. This is why the title is given to him, to restrict him. Not to say anything bigger than what I told you you are. You are hands of the cause. But the man says,